I'm going to ask a question about uh, during the 80s, having been in Texas and uh, a lot of refugees from Central America at that time. And uh, one of the industrial areas foundation uh, strategies at that time was to try to see whether uh, they could get the federal government to uh, grant amnesty. Mm -hmm. And uh, it did eventually grant a period of amnesty if you were in the country by a certain date. And uh, of course the church has got into that because people wanted their baptismal certificates and proving things. And, uh, what, what was your, what, what's your uh, observations about what happened at that time? And, uh, you know, amnesty today is a bad word. Uh, <coughs> was there any, was there any positive things about that? Uh, that somehow could be brought into present right. strategies? I think that, um, you know, we, we did have this period where there were large numbers of Central Americans fleeing political violence in El Salvador, Nicaragua, and eventually, um, you know, you get more people coming in than the individualized system can handle, right? Our individualized system is about, okay, we'll give you a hearing and we'll decide, are you fleeing persecution on a, a required ground, so are you really an activist or a target, or are you not fleeing on those grounds, in which case we're gonna deport you back. But you have such a mass of people because of the wars, the civil wars, um, the system was overwhelmed, and so Congress passed a law saying, well, look, Everyone who's here fleeing that violence can temporarily stay until the violence ends, and then we'll send you back. So it was kind of an amnesty, but with a time end. But then when the time ended, you know, the Civil Wars ended, um, uh, Congress kept extending the deadline, extending the deadline, because it was very unpopular to send these people back. Because by that time, they had married U.S. citizens, they had children that were U.S. citizens, and at that stage, it gets hard to unscramble the egg and send them back. Uh, but we have a long history as a nation that when there is a mass movement of people, you know, whether it's the Cubans um, or Haitians, you know, when there's a mass migration of people across our borders, we have a long history of sort of allowing temporary entry until conditions approve, and then usually what happens is after many years, people say, ah, you can just stay. <coughs> um, so I think um, there's a long tradition of that. I'm not sure that that's relevant right now to the current debate over immigration because we don't have these mass movements at this moment in time. And if we did, um, I think, you know, just the practicalities of it would, would require us to talk in those terms. But uh, Europe is facing the mass migration, we're, we're not. But it's a really important point about amnesty being a bad word now, and it speaks to a lot of what we've said about um, political pressure and the importance of grassroots mobilization. Like, that didn't happen accidentally. You know, there was a mobilization against, you know, so now amnesty is a bad word. Sanctuary city, which in the Bible is a good thing, uh, is now a bad word. So, you know, what does it take to make that have a bad resonance, right? So that there was a lot of activism there. Um, so that maybe a place we can push back is to say, you know, what's bad about amnesty? What's bad about sanctuary? What's bad about inclusion? You know, that's work we can all be doing all the time, I think. 